attacked them in the video last year. I'm, I'm wondering in what ways you're still seeing that pay off and maybe what you decided to study and focus and drill down on this year. Well, I think probably the piece in this conversation that got left out a little bit along the way is we studied ourselves first. You know, and, and we, we came out of spring last year not feeling great about how we were tackling. And so real trying to do some self-evaluation, you know, Luke and Chris were, uh, were having conversations about that and searching for ways to improve. And that's where we came along the, the stuff that we had uh, from the Seahawks and then modified it to fit us and to fit how we do our business and, and study other people as well. I think it's been, uh, it's, it's been extraordinary. It's been a... a it's a game changer for us, I think, and, and, and I think it's something that we continue to study and look at ways to get better, ways to drill it better. Uh, I do know this. I can't imagine anybody tackles more uh, in the country than we do. You know, two days a week we got live tackling uh, in, in season and right now every day in spring, and you're going to get better at the things you do the most. It's identified as a critical skill for all of us, and we've worked really hard on it. So I think, I think that we're, we're going to continue to improve. Anything that's equivalent to that this season that you're looking to take a big step in? Something that you've studied and maybe want to make a point of emphasis this year? Probably nothing we want to share, but that's a that's a great question. I mean, that, that's what you do, right? You study in ways to improve and the things, and, and I think there are things that we're actively looking at. It's a great question. Next year at this time, we'll tell, then we'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Back row right, Clay. Question for Coach. That's okay, Clay. I'll skip you. <laughs> who's, uh, who's, who's, had, who's had the best spring in your Eli, uh, Eli uh, was coming off of an illness last year in the spring and didn't have any idea how he was going to play. Uh, I thought he had a very good season, but I think he's had a, very, a much better off season in spring uh, than he's ever had. And his growth uh, physically, but also his growth as a leader and as a player, uh, and he's not finished. And he knows that, and we talk about that all the time. Uh, but but he has had a, a really, really good spring. I'm really excited about him. I think he can be very, very good. I, I would like to say that all of them better be because that's the coverage we play. So uh, he's uh, – but but he has been – he's had a really good spring. I'm really excited about him. Uh, back row left, Steve. Yeah, Coach, just the other position, uh, it seems like you have three guys there. Just how has that gone? Who's lined up and really performed well there at that other quarterback position? Garyon has had a very good spring. You know, Garyon's uh, put on weight. He's put on strength. He showed up at 168 pounds. He's 190 pounds. Um, he's a very fast player. Uh, his skill set continues to improve. I love my room right now. I love my unit. They, they, are, they are really working at the craft. They're studying themselves. They're grading themselves every day. Uh, they show up ready to work. And so Garyon has, has, has had a great spring. Damon Webb, this is his first spring. Sometimes people forget that stuff with those freshmen. It's a first spring for him. And so it's a lot, and it's hard. And he's playing corner and nickel. He's handling it extremely well. One of the most competitive players on the team. Uh, Marshawn is still uh, coming off the injury. And so we're hoping that next week, Marshawn is going to do some real full speed live stuff, uh, which will be a big week for him. So we're, we're, we've been building towards that. Uh, everything's going well. And so we're hoping that he's able to perform next week. Just the initial returns of how those guys have played, do you feel you could sustain the same kind of uh, coverages that you played yes. last year with Duran and uh, Eli? Yes, and absolutely. It's the mission, that's the quest, and we will. So they, they will be, and they will be. They will be good. They will be good. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Tim. Yeah, how you doing, Karen? Great. Uh, speak, speaking of uh, back to the tackling stuff, are y'all in some ways becoming better tacklers because of the rules? You understand what I'm saying? Nope. You're not? No, I don't know what the rules well, are. I mean, I mean, I mean, the new rules where you can't hit guys. I mean, you can't take these big shots at guys. I mean, that you have to be more proficient. Uh, in, we in we had a clinic. Of it's a great question. Now I understand it. We, it's not really so much the rules as it is the safety of the game, right? right. So we were in, in – uh, Marvin Lewis spoke to the, all the coaches at our clinic two years ago, and he talked about tackling, and, 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 and he was talking about the same stuff that the Seahawks are doing. And, and, and the delivery, when you're watching it, you're thinking it's like arm tackling, which those of us who grew up in the game, everybody said never arm tackle, you know, that, the whole thing about get your head across and all that stuff. Well, as the game is transformed, ain't nobody getting their head across. You better not be using your head. You better not be putting your head down. 
and all those kinds of things. So yes, the safety of the game is what generate all this. It's why you study rugby players, right? Because they're not wearing helmets. So they're making tackles, but they're keeping their face and their head out of there. And so that that is the genesis of where it started. What we've learned is it's pretty darn effective. And, and, and by trying to continually enhance that, we think it's made us better tacklers. And the other thing, I know you don't coach safety straight up, but you get to watch them. I mean, yeah. Von, Von Bell was talking the other day about how he's really working on being much more efficient as a tackler. I mean, it's, you know, how, how do you work on, I, I guess, the jump? I mean, not the jump, but, you know, the attack at the moment of truth. Uh, what are the kind of the drills y'all go through for stuff like that? Well, we do live tackling, and, and we do it in a variety of ways. We've got a ton of different drills, but I'm talking about tackle to the ground, which is not something that we did, and we do it individually for the most part. The reason you don't do it collectively it, other than scrimmage situations is because that's where an injury occurs, is when somebody gets leg whipped or something like that. When everybody's going in a scrimmage and everybody's tackling to the ground, it, it, it's not bad. It's like a Saturday. But the the Individual one-on-one -on -one tackle to the ground. I can't imagine that anybody does that more than we do in practice. One quick thing: you get to watch video all the time. Who of the receivers, in your mind, is kind of jumping out? Well, I'm going to tell you this: Michael Thomas is a superior player. He is a superior player, and he has had a great spring prior to the or before the injury. I mean, strong, tough, and a ball catcher. Um, uh, Noah Brown has had a great spring for a young kid. And again, a strong kid who lost a lot of weight. He's quicker, got a good first step burst and quickness. And uh, Jalen Marshall's playing a variety of positions, which I think doesn't do anything but increase his value to the team. He's playing outside. He's playing inside. He can go in the backfield. He's got, you know, the skill set to be able to do all of that. I think our receivers are very, very good. And I think that's what makes our corners better. we got to go against them every day. Hi, Bill. Hi, Terry. Uh, tomorrow you go back to your hometown and, and are honored. So my wife was asking me about a tweet that you hit out yesterday, something uh -oh. was it complaining about the officials in the Final Four game or something. Possibly. I'm just checking with you. Possibly. Okay, now your question. Very good. <laughs> uh, you got to go back to Cincinnati tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, how exciting is that for you? Very. I mean, you know, I can still tell you the lineup of the Big Red Machine, right? You know, Pete Rose to Joe Morgan to Ken Griffey to – Johnny Bench to Tony Perez and on and on, right? So, I mean, I grew up a Reds fan. I love the Cincinnati Reds. And, and uh, for me to be able to go back there and be on the field and be hanging out with in, in that environment is, is phenomenal for me. And uh, still my town, you know? And, and uh, so it's, it's, it's a special day. Related to that, you're also going to go to the White House in a couple of weeks. How about that? How do you balance that as a staff, the, the celebratory aspects of what you guys did with the idea that you can't be complacent, you've got to move on from that, you've got to get ready for this year. How do you balance that? I think there's tremendous value in appreciating the, what you've earned. I think there's tremendous value in that. To me, that's unbelievable motivation for next year. I don't think there's a single kid that sits in this room that says, well, we get to do all that stuff, so this year's not as important. I think it's, we get to do all that stuff, let's go do it again. I'm excited to have the opportunity to go again. So I think the celebration of victory is a great motivator for the future. I, have, I, don't, I, I discount that whole concept that celebrating and, and recognizing that we won somehow hurts us for the future. We're not taking away from anything that we're doing. In fact, I find that our players are working incredibly hard right now because they want to get back. That taste of that is a whole lot better than, than not because I've been there too, right, a couple years ago. So I, I think our guys, I, I think it's great motivation for our guys, and I think they should enjoy it. They have earned it, you know, and, and I think they're looking forward to going, and I think they're looking forward to going back. Do you sense that the complacency, the complacency issue is not going to be a Problem. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't sense it as an issue now. You know, I think what we do here is we grind, and we grind every day. And so we, we're, in the, we're in the immediate. And, and in the immediate, there's not a whole lot of time to say, well, you know, Coach, last year I did. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of that conversation going on. So for us, we're grinding. And I, I don't sense that at all. I don't, I don't sense guys saying, Coach, I don't want to go today. I got, you know, I got to go get a trophy. I, I, I sense guys wanting to be really, really good at what they're doing. Really, I, I mean that. Hey, Todd. How are you? Great. Hey, thanks for asking. The, the uh, development of a player, you know, uh, Gary on last year against Michigan State got thrown in a fire. He you did. Guys, you guys made a quick 
move yes. early in the game got him out yep. to the point now that he's having this great spring and, and as far as we know the the starter opposite of Eli just how does a player go from that end to where he is now yeah hard work and I, and I think to the same point he, he's got the memory of that right so that we're talking about oh celebration is great motivation so is getting your butt beat right and 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 failing and and not not doing what you thought you could do, what, what great motivation that is. And so we talk about that in very honest terms in our room. And when he trots out there uh, on, on Saturday the 18th, he's got to know it's a big boy world. And you're out there on an island and you got to make those plays. And when he trots out there September 7th or whatever that day is, he's got to know they're coming to get you. You know, they saw 13 play. What happened when you went out on the field last year? It came right at you, right? Play two. It took him one play to find him. So the, he knows that. And it, we live in a big boy world out there in, in press quarters at the corner position. So uh, you train and you work. There's a different level of expectation on the part of the player who, who feels really good that he's going to be the starter. You know, Damon Webb is nipping at his heels, and he wants that job. But Garyon's walking out of the locker room every morning saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that guy, right? So it's a little different level than I'm hoping I'm that guy. I might be that guy. I got, I got a safety net. There's no safety net. You know, we're walking the rope without a net. we got to go play. You guys get to see the quarterbacks. I mean, you get to see them. Boy, you guys side. love that quarterback thing. Well, well, a I lot mean, of fun. You know, we, Urban said that, you know, Cardell's still an inexperienced kid. He yeah. only started three games. How much better is he now than he was at the end of the season in spring here? Significantly. He's, you know, he's the biggest arm in college football. I mean, the guy is he, – he threw a field go route uh, Saturday, um, I don't know, 35 yards on a rope. And the guy, there aren't very many guys that can do that, you know, and it, it gets there really fast. So if you're in coverage, you better know this guy has got that skill set. He's got the ability to do that. He can do that without a big windup. You know, Cardell's got a great skill set. And at the same time, his growth and maturity and in and, and all areas, leadership, check and protections, being in charge out there is significant. And at the same time, the other two guys are getting in great work. So, you know, for me, I get the, I, that's the best situation in the world for us. We get to go against great quarterbacks who understand coverage, and if we make a mistake, they're taking advantage of it every day. And, and that doesn't do anything but make us better. A couple more. Third row left, right? Um, yeah, I know you said on signing day that um, you prefer a cornerback to play the nickel role, generally speaking. But Tyvis and Vaughn said that Cam's been working there a lot this spring. He has. Uh, yeah, my question is just, um, you know, you've got like five defensive backs coming in that are true freshmen. Is yes. there a chance that one of them, like Eric Glover Williams, can win the job or even push a guy like Damon Webb out to nickel, like, you know, in fall camp? I don't think there's any question that anybody can win that job. The incoming group, we expect to come play. We expect them to come compete and play. Uh, Cam Burroughs came in as a corner. So it's important to remember that too. The skill set required for the nickel and really the safeties in, in the system that we're playing right now is specific. And, and we've got to have a bunch of guys who are able to go out there and play man-to-man -man coverage. And so uh, uh, Cam is doing a great job this spring. Uh, Damon is a backup there. Uh, as we rotate through uh, in the fall when everybody's here and everybody's healthy, uh, there will be a lot of competition. And that's exciting. And there'll be a lot of competition for that spot as well. Yeah, thanks. Last question, Larry. Um, <coughs> follow up about Damon. He came here um, as one of the best corners in the country. Yep. Um, How has he been able to handle just this learning process, being second right now uh, behind Gary on it? Is moving him back to, to working out a nickel kind of a way to maybe see if you can find a way to get him on the field too? Oh, I expect him to play corner. I think it's a great question. I, I think it's competition, competition, competition. Uh, I, I think he's a very, very good football player. Uh, I think the second spring is easier for a kid than the first spring. And, you, got, you know, a guy who was sitting in a high school English class last year at this time going through spring is different than fall. You know, and, and so he's got a lot. He's sucking from a fire hose because he's playing two positions, and we're going and going and going and hard and physical. He's playing really well. So I, I have every expectation that he's going to play and play. He has 16 production points in Saturday scrimmage. Uh, he graded out as a champion. He's going to have he, – he's going to play a lot of ball, whether it's at corner or nickel. Uh, he's a football player. Good question. And last question. Doug? Hi, Doug. Hey, Gary. You talked about Marshawn hoping to get him back on the field. What's it been like for him – Having that injury, I mean, you're talking about there's all this competition that's going to be there. How has he sort of handled having to battle through that before he gets a chance to really? Yeah, I think it stinks. I think I think 
you know, when you're an elite athlete, the last thing you want to do is sit on the bench and not do anything. So he's in every meeting. He's engaged in every meeting. He's talking coverage. Uh, he's working right now. He's out there working uh, off to the side, doing work with Armani, doing work with uh, the trainers. He gets in. Uh, he got in six periods today, none of them what you would consider to be full speed kind of burst periods, but he is doing that off to the side. Uh, I think he's hungry. Uh, I think he's tired of sitting around, and I think those are dangerous guys. I, I can't wait to see him play. And he's a big, strong uh, corner that's going to gonna be, a, in my opinion, a, a dynamic football player. And so we're very excited. You know, I saw enough of him before he had the surgery to know that this guy can play. So I, I think that the transition in the next two weeks is important for him. And then summer's going to be critical, but expect him to play. And when you um, when you have two safeties like Tyvis and Vaughn, yeah, and that fun. Th I, I think to describe them as confident probably is <laughs> yeah <laughs> beyond. It's good. What is that as you guys work together as a secondary, work together as a defense? What does that do to have two guys in the back end? Here's what you want as a corner: you want clarity. Right? Coach talks about clarity of purpose all the time. So everything that we're doing out there is being driven by something. And somebody's in charge of it. And so in our system, it's the safeties. So if I'm the corner, I want clarity from my safety. I love a guy who looks over there and says this, whatever it is. And he knows, because now I know he knows what he's doing. Right? And that, and that communication is invaluable. You get a guy who looks at you and he's not sure. And now that's not fun. And I'm a corner. I got, I'm Eli Apple, and I look over, and whether it's Vaughn or Tyvis, and we're having that communication, man, that's exciting. And that confidence breeds confidence. And I don't think the guys in my room lack it. And so right now, you got a bunch of guys out there that feel like, I think they feel good about playing with each other. But you're absolutely right. The confident safety, the general, the leader, a guy stands out there and directs traffic with clarity, it makes a corner's life wonderful. It makes all our life wonderful. And they're doing a great job with it.